Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Grey Zone Warfare. They just released a new patch. So we're going to start by optimizing Windows. And after that, we're going to look at your Radian or NVIDIA parameter. And at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to disactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just disactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture. Capture. Make sure that everything is disactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to disactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to disactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's four gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're gonna struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radian driver if you have a Radian car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, yeah, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA parameter. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. Hey, just a quick break. If you want cheap games, you should check out Instant Gaming. I was on their site earlier and I saw that Clara Obscure Expedition 33 is on sale right now, way cheaper than normal. They have games for PC, PlayStation, Xbox and more. And don't worry, it's not a shady website. The games come from real official reseller. Their Trustpilot rating is great and they have a support open 24-7. You can also look at the uh, trending section, bestseller and pre-order section. Uh, there's always something new there. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to the video. So just before going inside of the game, uh, in the NVIDIA parameter, what I normally recommend, go to your graphics section and make sure that you refresh your game. You will see the gray zone warfare over there. And in the DLSS override, just make sure that you're using the latest model from the LSS and apply it. Um, so you're not, um, you, you don't have to wait on the developer to update their uh, DLSS version. Uh, I think it's coming with DLSS 4, but it's like two version or older than the one that uh, NVI is pushing right now. So just make sure that you're using the latest one. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, uh, the game is not running well, honestly. So I'm going to show you which parameter will provide you the most of your FPS. 
and uh, also if you want to keep your visibility high i'm going to show you what to use so first of all window mode make sure that you're playing full screen display resolution also make sure that you're playing native over there uh, fov it's question of preference really important here it's a vertical fov not horizontal fov so i don't know if you're playing 104 uh, uh, fov in call of duty this is not the same so just use a converter online google it you will see that a lot is available so me i like to play like 65 v-sync i'm not using it it add the uh, input lag uh, i don't limit my fps in the game i lock it with nvidia normally at 237 because i have a 240 hertz monitor and i want to stay in my g-sync range so for example if i'm running 241 fps i'm going to lose my g-sync uh, and it's pretty much the same thing with free sync if you have a radiant card so uh honestly normally just lock your fps 3 fps less than your amount of hertz when you want to use g-sync or free sync yeah after that, you have some quality parameter over there. Global illumination, this one is crazy. It's like 3 to 4% for each bracket. And look at the difference. If you want a nice experience, definitely go with medium. If you just want visibility and FPS because you, because you want to try hard, go with low. Shadow work quality, I recommend to go with medium. It will help a little bit to see enemies sometimes when you're not sure in some buildings and stuff like that. Object quality, go with low. A nice 5% boost over here. Texture resolution, if you have 8 gig and more of VRAM, epic. Uh, 6 gig I, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. Effect quality, reflection, and foliage, honestly, those ones go with low. You can expect a nice 15% boost in your FPS. Uh, reflection, it's crazy. It's tanking your FPS like crazy. Effect, you can have some crazy drop also with this one. So I'm not a huge fan of it. Shading quality, normally, all the people, you can run high. It's not a huge difference. It's like 1% for each bracket. But at Epic, you're going to lose trees. So my recommendation is go with high. And if you're playing on a low-end PC, just go with medium with this one. Post-processing, go with low. You don't want to add like any blurriness in your game and stuff like that. So definitely go with low. Any advanced setting, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, way to do it. Uh, really depend on the, the amount of FPS that you have right now. So we're going to start by uh, RTX card, 4000 or 5000 series. Definitely go with DLSS because for sure you're running DLSS 4 and run it with quality. It's really, really good. You're going to get like 10% boost in your FPS. And also, I want to mention in DLSS 4, balance is pretty good also. Uh, it compares with um, the uh, quality version of DLSS, I think, 3.7. So uh, this one also is really good. If you need FPS, you're going to get 15% boost over there. For the DLSS frame generation, I'm not using it. Uh, it adds a lot of input lag, honestly. It's really last resort. I don't know, your 10, 30, 60, no, the, your 40, 60, sorry, can't run the game. Uh, so just maybe using it, uh, you will. it will add like 40% boost in your FPS, but you will feel it when you're playing the game. For the LSS sharpness, I always play it between 50 to 60. Honestly, if the game looks very, go higher. If it looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. And reflects low latency, go with on. If you have a 2000 or 3000 series car from NVIDIA, definitely, again, they are assessed with quality. But if you need frame gen because you're struggling, uh, you have like, I don't know, a 4060 or something like that, you can use the frame generation from AMD over there, the FSR. So you're going to get a nice 40% boost uh, FPS. But it's, it's even worse than uh, frame generation from NVIDIA for the input lag. So I'm not a fan of this one. So uh, it's pretty much, again, last resort. If you have a Radiant car, go with FSR for sure. Go with something like quality or balance. Again, a, a bit like DLSS. The image quality is less good than the DLSS. And also, you can use frame generation a last resort if you really need, need it. The last one is variable uh, rate shading. Just go with off with this one. You don't want... Uh, uh, variable rate shading your image you will see that it will change depending on the performance so don't use that so this is pretty much it guys for my guide if you have any questions just comment in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel